Okay, picture this. Curiosity. NASA's rover, it's way out there on Mars, you know, over 140 million miles away, rolling across this dusty red landscape. Yeah, doing its thing. And then suddenly, it just, it finds something completely out of the blue. These bright, almost brilliant yellow crystals scattered on the ground. Uh-huh. Pure elemental sulfur. And that's the ticker, pure sulfur. Not what we usually see. Exactly. Not bound up with other stuff like we normally find it on Mars. It's, hmm. Well, it's never been seen quite like this before there. And what just grabs you immediately is how unexpected it is. I mean, we knew sulfur was there, right? We've seen it tons of times in sulfate minerals. Right, sulfates, the stuff that often points towards past water activity. Precisely. So finding sulfur wasn't the shock, but yeah. finding it raw, elemental, <laughs> just sulfur, that's a whole different story. It gives us this really fascinating puzzle. Absolutely, and that's exactly what we're jumping into today. We uh -huh. want to explore you know, the details of this find, how it connects back to everything else Curiosity's uncovered. What is a lot? Oh, totally. And crucially, why these yellow crystals might be, well, kind of a game changer for understanding if Mars could have once supported life. It's worth remembering, maybe stepping back a bit, that Curiosity was sent to this specific area because it's rich in sulfate. Yeah, that was the whole point, wasn't it? Exactly. The science thinking was solid. Sulfates often get left behind when water dries up. So this region was like, prime real estate for looking into Mars's watery past. Finding sulfur in some form was definitely on the cards. But not like this. It was supposed to be sulfates, sulfur bonded mm. chemically, you know, with oxygen and other elements. This is pure, and elemental. Unadulterated sulfur, yeah. It's and like imagine panning for gold and instead of finding flakes mixed in rock, you find a solid gold nugget just sitting there. Great analogy. It's that concentration, that specific form that's so, so intriguing. And Ashwin Vasavada, who's Curiosity's project scientist, he put it perfectly. Oh yeah, what did he say? He said, finding a field of stones made of pure sulfur is like finding an oasis in the desert. It shouldn't be there, so now we have to explain it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that really hits it, doesn't it? The uh, the scientific head scratching involved, it sums up that sense of discovery you go looking for A and find Z. Exactly, it forces you to rethink. And the timeline here is interesting too. They first spotted this stuff back in October, 2023. Right, and then they had to follow up, figure out how to investigate it properly, which led to the drilling operation just recently, this past June. That's it, June 18th. Curiosity drilled its 41st borehole right near these sulfur deposits, scooped up some powdered rock. Yeah, and those samples are now inside the rover, being analyzed by its onboard lab instruments, ChemCam and APXS. And the big question is what else is in there with the sulfur, right? Precisely, that's gonna be absolutely pivotal. Finding out what other compounds are mixed in or nearby could give us huge clues about how this pure sulfur actually formed. Like, was it volcanic? Mm -hmm. Or maybe something like hydrothermal vents, those hot spring type things we see on Earth? Could be. Or, you know, maybe it's some unique Martian process we haven't even thought of yet. The companion minerals are the key witnesses, so to speak. And the location itself adds another wrinkle. This is in the Gediz Vallis region. Which wasn't exactly a quiet place in Mars's past. No, not at all. Uh -huh. Formed by ancient water flows, big ones, and landslides too. A really dynamic environment, geologically speaking. Which immediately makes you wonder, right? Could that very dynamism, the water rushing through, the rocks tumbling down, could that have actually created the conditions for pure sulfur to deposit? Maybe it exposed sulfur-rich layers, or maybe the water chemistry was just right in that spot. It's possible. Understanding that link between the geology and the sulfur is, well, it's vital if we want to piece together the story of Mars's ancient environment and, you know, its potential for life. Okay, so to really get the weight of this sulfur find, let's maybe zoom out a bit. Think about Curiosity's whole journey, this rover. It's been incredible. Oh, an absolute workhorse. Landed in Gale Crater way back in 2012. 12 years ago now, almost. Traversed more than 16 miles, slowly climbing Mount Sharp. And Mount Sharp is like this giant history book of Mars, isn't it? Each layer tells a different chapter of the planet's environmental story over billions of years. And one of its first huge discoveries right near the base was that ancient lake bed. Yeah, de definitive proof, no doubt about it. Early Mars had liquid water sitting on its surface for potentially long periods, a basic requirement for life as we know it. And it wasn't just the water. Curiosity found the essential chemical building blocks too, didn't it? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. 
ironically. And potential energy sources that microbes could have used. Plus, let's not forget the organic molecules. Oh yeah, finding organics preserved in rocks billions of years old. That was massive. The yeah. building blocks of life right there. Huge. And then there's the methane, those seasonal whiffs of methane in the atmosphere. Curiosity keeps detecting. Which is tricky because geological things can make methane too, but... But it's also a potential biosignature. On Earth, lots of microbes produce it. So its presence on Mars, even fluctuating, keeps that possibility of past or maybe even present microbial activity on the table. It's like Curiosity's been collecting all these different puzzle pieces and its analysis of the rocks, the minerals, has painted this picture of Mars changing dramatically over time. Absolutely. From a potentially warmer, wetter place to the cold, dry desert we see now, you see it in the rocks as Curiosity climbs Mount Sharp. How so? Well, down low, near the base, you find lots of clay minerals. These typically form in the presence of abundant, stable water. Right, so just a wetter period. Exactly. But as Curiosity climbs higher into younger rock layers, it starts finding more and more sulfate minerals. Which points to? Points to a drying climate. Sulfates often form when water evaporates, leaving these minerals behind. So the geology itself tells a story of environmental transition. And there were other clues too, like those ancient stream beds with the rounded pebbles. Clear signs water flowed there and flowed vigorously enough to smooth down rocks. And the ongoing detection of complex organic molecules just keeps adding layers to the story. Plus, we shouldn't forget the radiation data Curiosity's been collecting. Oh, totally. Essential for planning future human missions, understanding the risks. So let's bring it back to this pure sulfur. Why is finding elemental sulfur such a big deal in planetary science? Well, here on Earth, finding pure sulfur often points to some pretty specific things happening, geologically or even biologically. Right. Think about volcanic areas. You get those sulfurous vents, fumaroles. Or deep sea hydrothermal vents, those black smokers, teeming with weird life forms that thrive on sulfur chemistry. And some types of microbes actually produce elemental sulfur as part of their metabolism. Okay, so finding it on Mars, it kind of hints that maybe similar processes were happening there way back when. Exactly. It opens up some really exciting possibilities for how Mars worked geologically speaking. It strongly suggests chemistry involving oxidation and reduction redox reactions were occurring. Chemistry involving water, heat, sulfur compounds. And that's where the link to life gets really interesting because here on Earth, we have these extremophiles, right? Microbes that live in unbelievably harsh places. Yeah, places we'd consider totally uninhabitable. And a lot of them use sulfur compounds in their metabolism. They essentially eat or breathe sulfur compounds to get energy. So you're saying if similar sulfur chemistry was happening on early Mars? It could have provided a ready energy source for any potential Martian microbes that might have existed. And sulfur itself is one of the essential elements for life, right? CHNOPS, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur. That's the one. It's crucial for certain amino acids, proteins, lots of metabolic stuff. So this discovery, it doesn't scream life found, but... No, definitely not. But when you put it together with everything else, Curiosity found the long-lasting water, the organic molecules, the other essential elements, it significantly strengthens the case that Mars did have habitable conditions. It adds another key ingredient, or at least evidence of processes that could support life. Precisely. It makes the picture of a potentially habitable ancient Mars that much more plausible. The conditions seem to have been there. And Becky Williams from the Planetary Science Institute, she made a good point about the Geddes Valles channel itself, the location. Oh, yeah. She emphasized that this wasn't some slow trickle. We're talking multiple Big flow events, floods, debris flows, carrying boulders. So a really active, high energy environment at times. Yeah, highlighting how dynamic that region was, which as you said earlier, could easily have driven some complex geochemistry, maybe leading to this sulfur deposition. So when you step back and look at all of Curiosity's findings, kind of in order, hmm. what picture emerges for you? You start with lakes, clays. Yeah, stable water, habitable conditions at the base of Mount Sharp. Mm -hmm. Then as you climb, it gets drier, more sulfates appear. A changing climate, clearly. And now possibly higher up or in specific locations like Geddes Valleys, you get this elemental sulfur. What does that add? For me, it adds a potential layer of dynamism, maybe volcanism, maybe hydrothermal activity that we didn't have such direct evidence for before in quite this way. It makes the story of Mars richer, more complex. Yeah, it's not just a simple fade from wet to dry, maybe. There were other processes, perhaps more energetic ones, happening too. Exactly. It complicates the narrative in a really interesting way. 
Okay, so let's try and wrap this up for today's deep dive. We've looked at curiosity stumbling upon this uh, unexpected pure elemental sulfur in Geddes Valleys. A really significant find. It points towards possible volcanic or hydrothermal activity on ancient Mars, which is super interesting because we see similar things forming sulfur here on Earth. And crucially, while it's not proof of life itself, finding this pure sulfur, especially when you add it to the pile of evidence, Curiosity already gathered, you know, the organics, the ancient water. It really does bolster the argument that Mars, way back when, lightly had the necessary conditions, the right ingredients and energy sources for microbial ecosystems to potentially get started and survive. It fits into that bigger story. Curiosity's been uncovering as it climbs Mount Sharp, tracing Mars's environmental history. From the wet clays. To the drying sulfates. And now this pure sulfur hinting at maybe more geological heat or chemical action that we previously assumed for certain periods or locations. It's another fascinating piece woven into the tapestry of Mars's past. So as we finish up, here's maybe a final thought to chew on. How might discovering pure elemental sulfur like this change how we think about habitable environments? Not just on Mars, but maybe elsewhere. That's a great question. Does it make us reconsider places with similar geology? Does it broaden the definition of where life might gain a foothold? maybe utilizing sulfur chemistry. Makes you wonder what other unexpected discoveries, what other kinds of oases might be out there waiting, doesn't it? Mm -hmm.